Digidai Degaku, the stealth free NFT mint that the entire market, or most of it, missed. Blockchain domains, are they a huge threat to traditional.com domains? Yes, they are, according to Microsoft. And why is the ENS club still pumping? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins. Welcome to the NFT Brief. I'm going to cover those stories and also what's happening in the wider NFT market in this week's update. Hope you enjoy the content in this video all about the NFT market and the latest news and events. If you do, please hit thumbs up. And if you want to get more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And of course, please remember the content in this video is for your informational purposes only. It's meant as news and not financial advice. NFTs, as you will see, are incredibly risky. So please do your own research. So at the time of recording this video, Ethereum is trading at $1,590. And when we recorded last week's update, it was trading at just over $1,664. So you can see that over the past seven days, it actually broke down to below $1,500 to a low of $1,431. So basically, Ethereum is trading below the 20 and 50 day moving average. So it'll be interesting to see if it drops any further or if it can find some support in this region before going back up above the 20 day moving average. Now, the corresponding dip in Ethereum hasn't had a huge change in the NFT market overall. So we're, we're still in an NFT bear market, basically. Uh, the 30 day volume for NFTs is 360,000 ETH. So that's down 22% versus the previous 30 days. And you can see here, according to this, to this Nansen dashboard, that the volume for last week for NFT trades in OpenSea was just over 50,000 ETH, and that's versus 48,000 on the previous week. So I guess there's a very small uptick in volume, but certainly nothing to write home about or nothing to get excited about. Now again, although we're in an NFT bear market, I always like to emphasize the fact that there are more users in the space this time this year versus this time last year. So we have 147,000 plus users in OpenSea, plus all of these new marketplaces, uh, including Pseudoswap, Whereas if we go back to August of last year, we had approximately uh, 62,000 users on OpenSea and we didn't have some of the new marketplaces that we have now, like Pseudoswap, X2Y2 and so on. We also didn't have the Coinbase marketplace, although I guess nobody's using that to buy their NFTs at the moment. Uh, transactions per week, again, not a huge amount of changes. 342,000 uh, for week closing August 29th versus... 315,000 transactions for the previous week. So very slight uptick, but again, nothing to get too excited about. When analyzing the NFT market, I also like to look at the various Nansen indices. Basically, it assigns a weighting to different types of NFTs based on their market cap. So you can see these are the top 500 uh, NFTs. And there's been a slight increase in the market cap for these uh, for this week. But, you know, we're still down significantly compared to where we were uh, in July. Uh, and certainly to compare to where we were back in April prior to the NFT market crash. Uh, now, one sector that I've been following quite closely as well as the blue chip NFTs. So I've talked about this in previous videos, Board Ape Yacht Club, CryptoPunks, and some other notable NFTs like Clonex, Chromie Squiggle, and Sandbox Land. Uh, and again, you can see that there's been a slight increase in the indices points weighting uh, that Nansen gives to this particular sector for August 29th versus August 25th. But again, we're down significantly uh, to where we were prior to the NFT uh, market crash. Um, so although there has been a slight recovery, uh, you know, we're still down significantly. Um, now, one sector that I have been following closely that I've talked about in previous videos is the generative art sector. So this comprises Chromie Squiggle, Murakami Flowers, Damien Hurst's Currency, and some other art blocks projects that are quite noticeable, like Memories of Quillen, uh, and also fragments and you can see here that uh, this has actually done better than some other sectors uh, since the NFT bear market uh, so there was a significant uh, pump for the market cap for these in July but it's kind of cooled off a little bit since uh, this pump in July. Using this dune.com dashboard we can see that the floor price for the bl uh, blue chip and most notable NFTs uh, is also down or continuing to decline. So Board Ape Yacht Club, currently the average floor price is sitting at approximately 83 ETH. Now, earlier on this month, it actually did dip further to 67 ETH. And of course, you have to factor in this floor price with the price of Ethereum as well. So if we go back to this chart here, um, Ethereum is down compared to where it was uh, earlier on this month when it was nearly $2,000. Uh, and Board Ape Yacht Club was worth 
108. So you will be down uh, five figures on your Board Ape Yacht Club holding uh, since that date. Uh, CryptoPunks is relatively stable, blue chip NFT project, currently hovering at around 67 ETH for the average floor price. Um, at one point, there was some of them uh, up near 100 ETH. Mutinate Yacht Club is down. Uh, other deed for other side is also down uh, significantly. The average price is 1.86 ETH compared to 3.42 ETH back in July. Um, and you can see similar price action for some of the other NFT projects. CloneX, which announced uh, some an, an airdrop <coughs> or an opportunity for holders to get some real world merch, including some Nike trainers, uh, is currently at 7.45 ETH. Uh, back in July, it was at 10 ETH. So again, down nearly 33%. Um, over the past six or seven weeks. Moonbirds is another notable blue chip, perhaps the biggest mint of the year so far. And it's embroiled in a bit of controversy since it went Creative Commons zero or Creative Commons no rights reserved a few weeks ago. A lot of holders weren't happy that this decision was taken without them being consulted. Uh, and the floor price has dipped. And well, I guess there's been a very slight recovery. So it's currently at 16 ETH. When I recorded last week's video, it was around 12 ETH. So 25% recovery, but still down significantly. Uh, from 30 ETH back in mid-July. So Now, the dip in floor price in Board Ape Yacht Club has also been affected by some negative news stories about Ben Dow. It's basically a liquidity platform that NFT traders are using. So you can deposit your Board Ape Yacht Club NFT or some other blue chip NFTs into this platform and get back some ETH. Uh, the problem is that because the floor price of Board Ape Yacht Club has dropped, people don't have the uh, enough ETH to pay back their loan and they're in danger of their Board Ape Yacht Club uh, NFT being auctioned off to cover the cost of their loan. So it's basically an NFT version of DeFi platforms like Aave. And I understand that two to 300 plus Board Ape Yacht Club NFTs are at risk of being auctioned off to cover loans that uh, have, I suppose people who use this platform are unable to pay off. Um, so there has been a lot of, I suppose, concern and fear, uncertainty and doubt or FUD on Twitter and in the NFT circles about uh, these Board Ape Yacht Club's NFTs, which are locked up in Bandau, and which people don't, or for which people don't have enough ETH to pay back their loan. One NFT stealth mint that has caught most of the NFT community by surprise and booked the trend of the NFT bear market is Digi Dai Dei Gaku. So this was a stealth mint, a free stealth mint that was launched or released earlier on in August. Now, if you want to open see today, you can see that this is the top NFT for the past seven days. And it's actually seen a phenomenal price rise, booking the trend of the NFT bear market. So you can see that it was a, a well under one ETH uh, just after mint. And then it hit a high of just under 14 ETH and it's currently trading at a little under 11 ETH at the time of recording this video. It's also done 5,500 uh, ETH in total volume, which is amazing because uh, when you actually start digging into the project, uh, you can see that the creator royalties for this particular project are 10%. So they'll have earned approximately a million dollars uh, just from volume from this NFT alone. The NFT project is the brainchild of Gabriel Layden, who comes from the Web2 uh, free to own or in free to play game space. And he is the CEO of Limit Break. So Limit Break made headlines when it was announced that they have over 200 million in funding to create blockchain games. And they have the backing of some significant partners like FTX, and Coinbase Ventures. One reason why the project may have mooned could be down to coverage like this on more traditional publications like VentureBeat. So it talks about who Gabe is and how he has over 200 million in funding to create his blockchain game with Limit Break, uh, and how he had previously created free-to-play mobile games at Machine Zone, which he sold for 300 million in 2020 to App Loving. In other words, he has quite a lot of experience uh, in the game design space, and now he's bringing it to Web3 and to blockchain games. So it's gonna be an unusual game uh, once it's created in that it's gonna be free to own rather than something that's free to play. So basically a free to play game, you know, is the, the type of cheap game that you download on your iPhone or Android, perhaps there's ads, or perhaps you'd have to purchase some premium or unlockable content at some point, but it obviously is big business. Whereas a free to own game means that you own the NFT, uh, you can do what you like with it, and you can use the NFT to unlock other games or other NFTs that you will also own. So Let's be honest, there isn't really any 
hugely successful blockchain or NFT games, unless you count Axie Infinity. Uh, now, NFT Worlds was doing quite well uh, up until Microsoft announced that Minecraft is banning all NFTs and all support for NFTs inside of its games. And the floor price for this particular project and other related projects hasn't really recovered. Uh, now, before the NFT bear market, it was well over 10 ETH. Now it's at 0 0.69 ETH. When Gabe was coming up with the idea for Digidai Daigaku, he analyzed Axie Infinity, according to this story, and he perceived a flaw in the model. Uh, basically, Axie Infinity scholars or gamers were borrowing money, often from guilds, to play the game, and then they were motivated to sell what they had when they became valuable. And in some cases, this meant that they would also get into debt and the NFTs and asset, digital assets that they owned will become worthless. And according to Gabe, this meant that free to play or play to earn became play to sell and it resulted in a crash for the, the market for the particular game in question. So Gabe went on to say that uh, by contrast with free to own games, which is what Digidai Daigaku is aiming to become, the developer builds an audience who is excited about the game and owning part of it, and they become advocates for seeing it succeed. Uh, and also because, you know, they're free, uh, you start at zero rather than in debt. Uh, of course, the caveat to that is if you went ahead and bought one now in OpenSea, uh, it will be a significant investment. But I guess that's a different type of NFT buyer or blockchain gamer to those who are playing Axie Infinity. The other type of NFT booking the current bear market trend are, of course, ENS, or Ethereum name service domains. We've talked about these extensively on previous market updates. So over the past week or so, the 999 Club, which are three digit uh, Ethereum name service NFTs, hit an all time high or the floor price hit another all time high. Uh, and this saw a corresponding increase in the floor price uh, for the 10K Club, which are four digit NFTs in this collection. So currently this floor price is at 31 ETH. I think it was at 34 or 35 ETH uh, a couple of days ago. And the 10K Club uh, was approaching 2 ETH in floor price. Not quite an all-time high, but certainly a huge increase because only a couple of weeks ago it was trading below 1 ETH. Some of this volume has trickled down to the 100K Club. So these were pretty much worthless just a few weeks ago. Now they're at 0 0.05 ETH. Uh, I think a couple of days ago they're at 0 0.07 ETH. So if you owned a good few of these, uh, which were free to mint in May, uh, could actually you know, be worth several hundred dollars depending on how many of them you minted. Now, there is a lot of uh, speculation on Twitter about the Tree Letter Club. Uh, so there are approximately 17,000 NFTs in this particular collection. Uh, I own a few of them. The reason why there is speculation about them is that a lot of these were minted in May and are currently due to expire. So unlike the 10K Club or the 100K Club, the Tree Letter uh, NFTs are a little bit expensive to maintain if you own a few of them. So it costs $64 to renew a Tree Letter ENS uh, NFT for a month. So if let's say you own 10 of them, that will cost you $640. Or it will cost you $640 to maintain one for the year. In other words, they're quite expensive to hold. So a lot of these are about to expire, meaning they're going to go back on the market. So the speculation is that potentially, uh, I suppose, interested parties are going to go in and pick up the premium ones. That is the ones with vowels or the ones with an acronyms that correspond to a company or which makes sense. And some of that volume could see an increase in floor price. Or perhaps DJ and NFT mentors will just pick up the ones that have gone onto the market and hold on to them for another three months. No one really knows yet. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with this particular collection. But just to point out, it has had an impact on the floor price. Uh, so the floor price for these was 0.6 or 0.7 each just a week or two ago. And now it's at 0.15 each. And the, the volume, uh, although it's down on yesterday, it is up significantly uh, on last week. So this is probably the NFT project that I'm follow or the ENS NFT project that I'm following uh, the closest because I want to see if volume trickles down from the 999 club uh, to this particular project. So definitely one uh, to keep an eye on. Now, some speculators are bullish on the single uh, emoji club, um, perhaps because there's only a limited amount of these, 1,356 to be precise. Uh, personally, I get the fact that they're limited, but I am a little bit skeptical about whether or not people will actually use emojis to interact at Web 3.0 sites and for their blockchain domains. Because although there are 1,356 emojis, there are also different types of emoji sets and emojis are a little bit more complicated to type and to remember than letters and numbers, but perhaps I'll be proved wrong. Anyway, the floor price for these is 0 0.47 ETH, so it is up uh, also uh, on previous weeks. I think it was at 0 0.3 ETH just over a week ago. Finally, I was interested to read uh, this story on Tech Radar, a mainstream tech publication that unearthed a 2021 report from Microsoft. The 2021 Digital Defense Report 
called out blockchain domains, so Ethereum name service domains, and also dot Bitcoin domains, dot crypto domains, and so on, as an emerging threat outside of regulation. It says that blockchain domains could be used as part of cyber criminal infrastructure and operations, a common criticism in the cryptocurrency and NFT space uh, that doesn't always hold water. It also says the blockchain domains work differently from traditional domains because you don't purchase them from a typical registrar, instead you mint them, and they're not controlled by ICANN or a regulated DNS system. So basically, they can't be taken off you or you can't lose your registration or access to your domain once you've minted one. Uh, and in this particular news story, they actually cited uh, an interview with Matthew Gould, who's the founder and chief executive of Unstoppable Domains. Now, don't confuse Unstoppable Domains with ENS Domains. Unstoppable Domains is a private company for minting .bitcoin and .crypto domains and so on. And while these are blockchain domains, they're not the same as Ethereum name service domains. Anyway, so Microsoft's argument that blockchain domains pose a significant threat to .com may hold some water, but not anytime soon. So to put it in context, there are 2.5 million blockchain domains registered at the moment. Sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Well, there were over 160 million .com domains, and that's to say nothing of the .io, .xyz, .net, and all the other traditional domains out there. Also, as somebody who's built a lot of websites over the years, I can tell you that a blockchain domain does not register in Google search results. So if I fire up my blog on a blockchain domain, nobody is going to find it. So I can use my blockchain domain uh, to log into Web 3.0 sites, to manage my cryptocurrency wallets, to manage my NFTs, and for my Web 3.0 identity. But I can't actually build a commercial site like techradar.com on a blockchain domain, at least not yet. I could redirect to my .com, but it's not going to be the same. So I suppose until that changes, I can't really see blockchain domains threatening .com anytime soon. And also, there's a huge way to go between 2.5 million and 160 million. That said, it is, I suppose, a bullish news story if you have Ethereum name service domains or if you're using unstoppable domains to pick up other types of block blockchain domains. That's it for this week's edition of the NFT Brief. If you found this week's edition interesting, let me know in the comment section below. If there's particular topics they'd like me to cover in future editions, please also let me know. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more NFT market updates just like this one.